once again, we're headed to Terciera where we're going to haul out for a month or so while we go home and go to a family reunion and work and earn some money uh, so that we can get back to it as soon as possible. It's sad to leave Horta, but we are gonna come back. So it's been a bit stressful um, just with like organizing where to leave the boat and when to when to head out and still have enough time to see Vidal, but uh, we're pretty happy with how things turned out. So the island that we're heading for is, we'll slip between Pico and uh, San Miguel, and then after we pass the end of San Miguel, we turn up and we'll head towards Terciera. So we're, uh, we're getting there. The route routing software that our Australian friends had, they ran the numbers for us, and it says we should be there between a day and six hours and a day and 12 hours, so somewhere in that range. But the winds are very different from what was predicted. It's a lot more wind. We have pretty much a steady 10 to 15 knots, and based on avionics and our current speed, which will always change, uh, we should be there in about 12 hours, but it's definitely gonna be an overnight passage. So behind us, we have Fayal, which is the island where Horta was, where, which is where we're moored. And then as we move over this way, we have Pico, which according to our Australian friends, its mountaintop is 7,000, and I believe he said meters, if not feet. And I'm very aware that that is a huge difference, but it is exceedingly tall. It actually normally pokes out above the clouds that are there. So it's quite a mountain. And then as we continue this way, we'll see the island of San Miguel. And way off in the distance in this area is Graciosa, which is a teeny tiny little island. sail here so we're in the lee of San Miguel but the great thing is since we're in the lee of him he's blocking all the seas so there's no fetch for seas to build we're about a quarter of the way to Terciera towards Tercier. Yeah, we have about 10 miles to go to make it into the marina. So, tied up in the marina in Horta, we were tied to a cement quay, and they are very unforgiving. And they will pop your inflatable fender like nothing else, which is why I made these rope fenders a few years back. They're great because they won't pop, they're really strong, they protect the boat, but they are so heavy. So each one weighs about 80 pounds. We had them set up, and it was an overnight passage from Horta to Terciera. So the question was not, what do we do with the dinghy or something like that, it was, do we leave the fenders out or do we bring them in? And the consensus was they're high enough that they won't get in the water and won't slow us down. So we just left them be because they're just so heavy. So when we pull in here, all we have to do is tie the sails up. We don't have to deploy the fenders. And we're coming in soon and hopefully they'll be able to get us into the dry dock slip pretty quickly. 
and uh, get us out of the water. When we were originally looking at coming to the Azores, we did some research and I noticed a whole bunch of the websites all said like, you know, charter a boat in the Azores and sail the Azores and on and on. I couldn't figure out why. I'm like, if there's something gorgeous and tropical like say the Bahamas, why would you go to cold Azores? And it now makes sense because after being in the Bahamas, the Bahamas have beautiful waters and beautiful snorkeling. But then when you go to shore, not much there. The Azores apparently have beautiful waters and beautiful snorkeling, but there's so much on shore we haven't even looked at the water. So that's one giant plus form. And two, it's kind of like the Bahamas where the islands are all super close to each other. I mean, overnight we've passed by four islands, but then when you get to shore, it's just so beautiful here. So all these islands are volcanic and you can really see, it's like all these little craters and little peaks everywhere. And a friend has come to meet us, so we're going to have a fun evening with him before all the craziness starts tomorrow and we have to kind of get into leaving mode. These are the, the Holy Spirit houses, they, they call them Imperius in Portuguese. Um, and in the, the spring, during the uh, Holy Spirit festivals, they will, they will give food and bread and stuff and wine from here. So it's, it's, it's really fun. Is it that the spirits live in the house? <laughs> I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> took us to his boat in the marina here in Proya and it's a wonderful little boat Ava this is a Contessa 26 very comfortable interior that's what I care about <laughs> Give it to me, I'll, I'll put okay. it on mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be These you. These are lawfish, they're in English, they're called limpets. Um, they're shellfish on the rocks, so peel them off the rocks. You, you can eat them raw, but these are real, really tasty.
this area is super filthy, and this side's not so filthy. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.